Morning, all. All right, so we have two games tonight in the NHL, and then things start to change in terms of the scheduling. There are some series that have extra days off scheduled in there. So we'll have days of one game, days of three games, and should be fun. All right, so the two games tonight, one starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, that being the Florida Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs for game two. Florida, of course, won game one, and they're looking to go up two games to nothing heading home. Uh, so Kachuk, five goals, nine assists, 14 points. As uh, Toronto's finding out the same way Boston did, he's not easy to contain. Neither is Brandon Montour. Six goals, three assists, nine points. You want to talk about a career year. Montour is absolutely crushing it this year. And then on the Toronto side, Marner. They could use a goal from Marner tonight. Two goals, nine assists in the playoffs for 11 points. Marner's been fantastic, but yeah, they could use a goal. And probably one from their captain too, John Tavares. Uh, four goals, three assists, seven points for him. And really for Toronto in, in, in general, I think it's important that they get a lead and they show that they can keep that lead on Florida and that they can neutralize that speed and transition game uh, that does make Florida so dangerous out there. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. And then uh, Seattle and the Dallas Stars. So this one should be fun. Uh, Seattle leads the series 1-0 and again at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, but I would think that puck drop will probably be 650 Pacific, 950 Eastern, which again, and I feel bad for people in, in the middle of the continent because, yeah, the schedule makers really are far more concerned about the national network broadcasts than putting these games on at a time that, I don't know, people are awake in that area. But at any rate, Dallas, I hope they can stay awake tonight because Seattle's looking to go up two games to nothing as well. Uh, Yanni Gord, a lot of playoff experience. It's showing in this round as well as it did in the last one. Two goals, five assists, seven points. And Jaden Schwartz has some playoff experience as well. Three goals, three assists, six points. And these are some key guys. Uh, Seattle is, is as a team on their first run, but not everybody on this team is having their first run in the Stanley Cup playoff. Uh, on the Dallas side, Pavelski, just the two games played, four goals all in that last game. One assist from the first game he played, and so five points in two games for Pavelski altogether. Tyler Sagan, now that Pavelski's back, hopefully Sagan's production stays up. Four goals, two assists, six points. If it doesn't, Pavelski will end up back on that line. Uh, and if they don't win game two, I'm guessing some line changes are going to take place anyways. But yeah, so can Seattle go up two games to nothing? They can, uh, if Dallas doesn't find a way to to reverse course here and, and basically avoid the meltdown they had in the first period of the last game, they have a chance. Uh, now, yesterday they announced the Calder finalists. Uh, the Calder finalists are as follows. Matty Beneers, not a surprise. <clears throat> Owen Power, also not a surprise. And Stuart Skinner, not a surprise. So the three finalists, I mean, Jake Sanderson could have been in there as well. Uh, there are a few others that you, you could have put in there. I've mentioned Michelli before. I'm a big Michelli supporter. But I, I knew the amount of goals wasn't there for him to get the attention necessary to win the Calder, and he missed some games. Uh, his points per game, he was, I believe, higher than Beneers. But again, the goals and the fact that Beneers plays a two-way game and Seattle's in the playoffs, it's going to get Beneers some votes. I still think he probably wins it, but any of the three would make a pretty good Calder winner. Uh, Mark Borowiecki announced yesterday he retires as a member of the Nashville Predators. Uh, 458 games, 15 goals, 41 assists, 56 points, 848 penalty minutes. And I remember with Borowiecki, I remember the story of him stopping a mugger in Vancouver. Uh, also, I remember, we all remember the video made with Eugene Melnick where they were trying to sell Ottawa fans on stuff. And yeah. That was different, and at any rate, yeah, Borowiecki's created some memories for, for all of us hockey fans over his career. Um, not bad for a depth defenseman, who at times was a, was a number seven, at times he was a top four in Ottawa. Uh, but yeah, so he retires now, he's decided it's time, and I wish him all the best in retirement. And then to close this out, uh, some sad news coming out today as well. Peter Klima, best remembered for the 1990 triple overtime winner for the Oilers against Boston. And as I mentioned before, interestingly enough, he had been stapled to the bench for a while before that before that shift. So you watch that shift and go, wow, he just skates through everybody. I don't think he had played since the third period. He had been stapled to the bench and they decided, all right, well, we'll give him a shot. And he skated through everybody. So Klima passes away at age 58. That is far too young. I agree with people on that. Um, condolences to friends, family. Uh, I would imagine 
Uh, this will shake up his former teammates as well. Uh, it's it's always upsetting, and so uh, all the best to them. And uh, yeah, uh, so the Oilers uh, could have maybe a patch on their jersey when they come home, just sort of like for game or something like that for for him. Although now that it's playoffs, I don't know if that that changes things any. I don't know if if the patch regulations are different. I have no idea how that works with the NHL, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Klima, I've already done a career video on Klima that's already on the channel, so for anybody wondering, it's there, you just search on the channel, it comes up, and uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video, it is an honor and a pleasure to be in front of each and every one of you each and every day, and I will talk to you again.